Well, today, uh, steel costs. Uh, so we've seen a, we've seen steel costs increase somewhat, but as I said earlier, I don't think the United States or China. There'll be some jockeying back and forth, and there'll be something that leaves some people unhappy. And but I don't think uh, I don't think either country uh, will dig themselves into something that precipitates and continues any kind of real trade war in this country. We, we've had that in the past a few times, and I think we've, we've learned a general lesson on it. But there will, uh, there will be some, some things about our trade policies that irritate others, and there'll be some from others that irritate us, and there'll be some back and forth. But in the end, I don't think we'll come out with a, with a, a, a terrible answer on it. Uh, uh, Charlie, on, I'll let you. Well, steel has it reached the conditions in steel were almost unbelievably adverse to the American steel industry. You know, even Donald Trump can be right on some of this stuff. The the, the, the thing about trade. I've always said that the president, whether it's president, any president, uh, needs to be an educator in chief, which Roosevelt was in the Depression. That's why he had those fireside chats, and it was very important that he communicated to the people uh, what needed to be done and how, and uh, and what was happening around them. And uh, uh, trade is particularly difficult because. The benefits of trade are basically not visible. You know, you don't know what you would be paying for the clothes you're wearing today if, if we'd had a rule they all had to be manufactured in the United States, or what you'd be paying for your television set, or whatever it may be. You, no one thinks about the benefits day by day as they walk around buying things and carrying on their own business. The negatives, and there are negatives, uh, are very are very apparent and very painful. And if you're laid off, uh, like happened in our shoe business in Maine, and you know you have been a very, very, very good worker, and you are proud of what you did, and maybe your parents did it before you, and all of a sudden you find out that American shoes, shoes manufactured in America, are not competitive with shoes made outside the United States, you know, you can talk all you about Adam Smith or David Ricardo or something and explain the benefits of free trade and comparative advantage and all that sort of thing. And that doesn't make any difference. And if you're 55 or 60 years old to talk about retraining or something like that, you know, so what? Uh, so I, it is tough in politics where you have a hidden benefit and a very, a very visible cost to a certain percentage of, a cons of your constituency. And you need to do two things under those circumstances if you have that situation. You know what's good for the country. So you have to be very good at explaining how it does really hurt in a real way somebody that works in a textile mill like we had in New Bedford where you only spoke Portuguese, half our workers only spoke Portuguese. and. And suddenly they have no job, and they've been doing their job well for years. You've got to do two things. You can you have to you have to understand that that that's the price individuals pay for what's good for what, for the collective good, and secondly, you got to take care of the people that are that were retraining as a joke because of their age or whatever it may be, and you've, you've got to take care of the people that become the roadkill in something that is co collectively good for us as a country and. Uh, uh, that takes that takes society acting through its representatives to to develop the policies that will get us the right collective result and not kill too many people economically in the process. And and you know we've done that in various arenas over the years. 
the people in their productive years do help take care of the people that are too old uh, and too young. I mean, every time a baby is born in the United States, you know, we take on an obligation of, of educating them for 12 years. It'll cost $150,000 now, you know. It, it, we, we, we have a system that has a bond between the people in their productive years and the ones in the young and old, and it gets better over time, far from perfect now, but it, it has gotten better over time, and I believe that, that trade properly explained and with policies that take care of the people that are roadkill is good for our country and, and, and can be explained, but I think it's a tough, it's been a tough, tough sell to a guy that made shoes in Dexter, Maine, or, or worked on a loom in New Bedford, Mass., or works in a steel mill in Youngstown, Ohio.